Oh, baby, it's the bull zooka time as Bitcoin rides the green dildos to heaven and beyond as Bitcoin does rally up for a little bit of a Santa rally, a little bit of a Santa rally as he gets his big bag of dildos ready for some action. And in this video, we'll be going over a very specific signal, a very, very important signal that has accurately marked all Bitcoin prior cycle highs. And without this signal, without this minimum uh, signal that, we, that, that we'll be going over, I will not be, um, well, I will not be selling. <laughs> as everyone likes to say, uh, I would not really be considering getting out of long-term positions. Of course, you can do whatever the hell that you want to do, and uh, we're just having a little bit of fun here because it's a fun time. Now, before we get into it, I do want to also let you know that, yes, regarding the weekly Q&A session, uh, which we do have a new thread open for November 10th um, video right here, uh, again, you can join for free in the link in the description below and contribute to this and ask whatever the hell that you want. Um, in fact, this person asked three times, so he's obviously lobotomized uh, <laughs> or can't or can't figure out the internet. Um, but because there has already been so many damn questions here and we're literally not even two days into this new week, um, what I'm gonna do is is I'm gonna have a, uh, a special thread here for the members who join specifically on the YouTube channel. So if you hit that join button and then you join the Q&A tier, there will be a separate thread for you. Those will be prioritized. But until then, you know, you can freely contribute over here and We'll see how far we get into this video. Um, anyways, let's get into the actual heart of the content uh, as of now. And this is going to be going off of the weekly BBWP, the Bollinger Band with Percentile Indicator. And as you can see, all prior cycle highs, even, you know, even just major highs, have been met with a very specific signal on this indicator. Where is my indicator? Well, let me just bring it right on up. And you can see right here with the default settings, uh, we have never seen a cycle high without the BBWP at minimum, at minimum on the weekly time frame, getting to at least 93 percentile. Um, and of course, if we're just talking about major highs and that number would go down uh, significantly to about uh, 75 percentile. But as of right now, you know, I think most people are interested in the cycle high and I would not be entertaining the possibility or the probability of a cycle high until, you know, at least we see 90 percentile um, for the weekly B BBWP. If you're wondering what this indicator is and what it does, it is essentially a volatility-based indicator, volatility and statistics-based uh, indicator. And what does it tell you? Well, it tells you the dispersion of returns and how crazy they're getting in relationship to the look back and then ranking that in a percentile format. So as of right now, for reference, even with all of this crazy you know, $10,000 moves that we've seen over these past couple of weeks, uh, it is currently at 57 spot, 94 percentile. So... Yeah, I mean, things probably get crazier. Um, we can talk about, you know, what that might translate into actual uh, price targets, I suppose, soon enough. But, um, you know, again, this is a minimum signal right here for accurately defining a cycle high because you will notice on in some in some um, cycles in particular, especially the last one, the last one in June of 2019, we can see that it actually moved higher um, uh, than that 93 percentile. Um, and it wasn't really until we saw it come back down below that region where highs were actually put in again, a little bit later. Um, and in fact, I mean, things did trade even further North, uh, later on in that year, but it, you know, as far as the, you know, general price high, that was pretty much it. 60,000 bucks, let's call it, you know, give or take a little bit from that number. So this will give us kind of a, you know, a good sort of bird's eye view of when to be a little bit more cautious, not to say that things have to necessarily stop exactly right there, but I just wouldn't be entertaining the possibility at all of a cycle high until we at least see this get up to 90 percentile. So that does imply that we do have uh, likely some more room to go. Um, in this case, we can also reference the weekly RSI as well. Um, it, uh, for the weekly RSI, I've marked off a similar region right here with the red vertical bar at about the 88 region that has marked at minimum, again, cycle highs or, or in some cases, major highs as well. Um, now, all cycles have at least seen the RSI get into the 90s before a high was put in, not necessarily that the high was put in at the 90s, but it had to get into the 90s first, come down, create some divergence, and then, and then the cycle was over. Um, so again, right here, for reference, we see that the weekly RSI is at 72 and a half. Um, so, 
Probably higher. Um, now, what I have done, or what we can do with caretakers RSI, is we can actually do a reverse calculation. So, what I've gone ahead and done is, or what I'm going to do right here is, I'm going to uh, find the reverse calculation for. It can only go off at the first, uh, you know, the current period, obviously, um, for a read of 88. So, again, this is not going to be like a realistic price target, but you know, we can follow up on this with each and every week and it should kind of zero in closer and closer. So I'll put an 88 right here for the critical bull zone. And then we can go reference the critical uh, enters bull critical zone above. Uh, you know, if it were to do it this week and literally get above 88, uh, that would be essentially 160,000 um, bucks. Again, that's going to massively change with each and every passing week because obviously, uh, because understand that that would be calculating like if this week was literally going to go to 88. Um, so I do suspect that cycle high will be actually lower than that for the people who are like super, super bullish looking for, you know, I don't know, 200,000 plus or, you know, shit like that. I, I do think it's less and less likely, but, um, but ultimately again, minimum sort of uh, thing right here. And, um, and as of right now, I, you know, still, <laughs> would still imply uh, higher. So while things are crazy, they probably get crazier. Again, just for, you know, just intuitively, Bitcoin underwent about a seven to eight, eighth month long consolidation. Do you think an eighth month long consolidation can be resolved in two weeks of, I mean, it's not even two weeks, it's about nine days of, of, of explosive price movement? No, um, probably at least three. <laughs> Bitcoin does like to actually trend it in, um, in, uh, in, in pairs of twos a lot of the time, but, uh, but yeah, this one very likely to continue more. Um, you know, I, I think I'd have to massively or i wouldn't have to massively because we spoke about this yesterday but i would have to say uh i i think bitcoin will not just hit a hundred thousand bucks before end of year but maybe even this month um elsa has made a prediction as well she's actually quite accurate typically and she and she has uh she says two within two weeks within two weeks anyways um monthly hpdr look right here again we can see that the monthly hpdr is or sorry the median i should say is right around ninety six and a half thousand bucks so i do suspect that we will we we actually probably will see that this month um that's in my opinion close enough two hundred thousand bucks i don't necessarily know if i'd be willing to say that bitcoin's going to close above the median um for this month but again just perfect example right here reclaiming the lower side of the range at the 38.2 level opening above there you know the median is going to be a nice target especially as volatility does expand um now if and when bitcoin does close above that i mean i suppose that opens up the doors towards uh, potentially move towards the top side of the 38.2 level which as of right now and again this will change with each and every passing month is actually uh, kind of around that 160,000 bucks uh number again so you know that's kind of popping up a, a few times here um maybe it's a number to keep a keep in mind you know longer term um, but ultimately, somewhere around there, again, we'll, we'll update with this um, as each and every uh, m month does pass on by. What else do we have? We have some RS, or sorry, <laughs> I already referenced that one. Uh, we have some daily statistics over here. Again, the daily average bars continue. <laughs> Can they just fucking continue. Uh, the CT sequential right here. But I think actually what's maybe, <laughs> I don't even know if this is going to be super interesting today because... For price statistics, or you know, when we're going off of the H pass, the historical price action statistics, uh, it works best when Bitcoin is, you know, is is it's in its kind of like average sort of range and consolidation. I mean, right now Bitcoin's in breakout mode, so you know you're going to see it overperform in this case to the upside. Uh, but for what it's worth, if there is going to be a pullback, Tuesdays. You know, not the worst day to happen. Uh, Wednesday is actually the most likely day just because it's the most likely day to close negatively since this uh, year began. But Tuesday would be a close second. And we can all see the highest negative returns for a Tuesday as well. So we actually already saw Bitcoin play down to the bottom side of that average range, which was the tick to 86 and uh, about 86,000 um, bucks. Bitcoin looking, you know, pretty strong off of that as well. So I don't necessarily know. If I, I mean, you know, if, if it does close like unchanged here, probably sets it up for a move uh, higher later this week. Um, yeah, again, things get crazier, I suppose, um, as we kind of uh, move on through this. Um, what else did I want to reference? Um, 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 yeah, a lot of people have been asking about the CT sequential over here as well. It's actually going to be included with the H pass. Um, so if you do, uh, if you do get that on the on our on our store over here, it'll come with it um, soon enough. In fact. I'll probably initiate that tomorrow, tomorrow, Wednesday.
Uh, but for right now, just understand that that is, you know, that is the, uh, the what's it called? The, the, the plan. Yeah, the plan. All right. What else did I want to uh, speak about here? Um, oh, yeah. Let's talk about some lower term time frames as well. Everyone seems to love that, even though I would uh, caution against getting caught in lower term time frame moves during a, you know, a macro breakout. But, uh, you know, yesterday... Um, we did not see any conditions that would confirm a local high. Thus, there was no pullback to be spoken of, um, except for very, very short term. Uh, in this case, more or less just looks like continuation on the four hour time frame. We are starting to hit very critical levels here on the four hour. However, uh, four hour BBWP getting all the way up there. But even, even with this, with, uh, with this read, I would actually not look at this as conclusive of, of you know a high exactly here just yet. What I want to see is the four hour BBWP come down below the moving average, and then both of them both of them having negative slopes. At that point, we're probably looking at um, a pullback into into very likely a higher low on the four hour time frame. Um, for reference, there the four hour RSI again, no bearish divergence to even be uh, spoken of. Um, literally making new highs. So I. I, I I, you know, if I had to say, if I had to, if I had to uh, speak about lower term time frames, say the same thing as yesterday. I think Bitcoin is still actually more likely to continue here to the upside than not um, before a pullback. When a pullback does happen, there's going to be a couple areas of interest. One is going to be 82,000. The next one's going to be 77,000. Um, but until we actually even get, uh, you know, some semblance of a high on a lower term time frame like this, I, uh, it's kind of like a fool's errand. Um, I think the more important things to be looking at is, of course, the higher term time frames. Anyways, I think we've gotten through the majority of this video. I do want to quickly point out over here um, for the people who are in the Quant Prime service, which allows you to create, test, and automate your trades. I just posted a new uh, a new trading template right here, a new or a new strategy template right here um, for the hourly time frame. Uh, you know, pretty good. Again, these are for, for the people who are um, in this uh, in this service. These strategies are left in an unoptimized state. Uh, but as you can see, you know, viable in and of itself. Um, anyway, so, you know, put your own spin on it. And I'm sure I can assure you that you will get actually even better um, returns in this. But, you know, that is that is there and available for you. And then also, um, I want to give a quick shout out to MetaSignals as well. It's been a while since I spoke about them. But of course, now that the now that the market it's back and they actually have uh, a new um, uh, uh, algorithm pr um, running right now. Uh, I do want to bring them back up because their 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 win rate for for reaching target one during the month of October, yeah, for the full month of October was over sixty nine percent, which is a great number. Um, <laughs> so not bad right there. So if you are looking for more of like a spoon feeding um, type service that essentially you know gives you trade setups like this. Um, or, you know, more or less calls your attention to it because I never want to present it like that. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's essentially letting you know, hey, there's a higher probability of this happening right here. And as you can see, target one being hit, you know, as a, I mean, I shouldn't say this, but it has a pretty high probability and, you know, usually a one to one uh, risk to reward ratio. So fair enough. I mean, do with that information as you will, uh, but getting a nice BNB move right here on the three hour time frame, and even an XRP move here on the uh, 45 minute time frame. And they, of course, have uh, even free signals that they give out, which um, you know you can reference on their Discord. So just check them out um, uh, with the link in the description below. And uh, yeah, yeah, again, you can you can check out their shit for free. See if it's see if it's relevant to your interests or or or, uh, or not. Anyways. That's a good place for me to be leaving off on this video. <laughs> Long one, man, but many, many things to be speaking about. As always, I'd like to wish you the best of best. Tomorrow we'll do a live stream. So looking forward to that. And uh, with that said, take care, much love, and see you hopefully tomorrow.